Welcome everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for coming to the weekly uh, roll-up for the uh, Cepheus Protocol. Today we have just Robert with us today. <laughs> if you'd like to introduce yourself again. Hi, Game Director and Lead Programmer. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's good enough. Uh, so today, um, let's begin with the Developer Roundtable like we did last time. Uh, so let's start it off with the operator. So how is that going? So I heard there's going to be a few changes with that. So we had a straw poll about roughly a month ago to the date, and we basically were just kind of arguing that if we were able to do it in third person and convert it over in a third person instead of having first person, it would work better with our limited amount of people we have on the team, our mocap suit. And we'll be able to get better quality animations out as well, just because what you can't mocap for a 1P, at least what I, we don't have the technical ability to. So, if the softball went through, and like I think it was like 80 or 85 percent approval. So we did the conversion over a six-hour uh, test run on Monday. I think I, I streamed it on my personal. No, I think I streamed it on the uh, Helsing on the Winds one on Monday. Uh, what you saw in the announcements channel was roughly around six hours of work. We put in a little bit more on Tuesday. Uh, I got to put in some more tonight going into tomorrow. But the idea is that we're taking a lot of inspiration from World War Z, a division, um, and just kind of getting it to where like it's fully fleshed out. You could aim, you know, you could relax shoot was what they was what we call it at least when you're not aiming and you shoot hip firing uh, is what they call it in the division as well. Um, and just setting all that up, getting all the systems converting it over, making it cleaner. Because the biggest thing was taking all the things that we learned from first person and figuring out how do we do it in a way that's not blueprint based, that's compiled completely C plus plus, so then that way it's easier for us at least to replicate and do the multiplayer stuff. Because the big thing for us was, you know, it, it, anything we're doing now is to finalize it and be able to get it to a point where we do start doing the actual like co-op uh, code for making other people be able to play as operators that transition is as seamless as possible. Um, and that was part of this as well, is that if you were going to stay at the one first, first person, that was going to have to be redone. So it was, cleaned up. it was more cleaned up because it was more of a prototype of like, okay, how does this feel? Do people like it? And people did. And it seems like the third person is really resonating with people when I've sent it out to a bunch of people on DMs. I put up the announcement, so it seems like it's the right direction to go in, just also based off of what we could do ourselves and flesh out. Um, and, I'm, and just at this point, we're just trying to just kind of get everything converted to what we already have done. We'll probably leave the attachment out. We'll have it to one weapon for the time being, because we do not want to focus too many resources into the operator. And then the RTS stagnates, so we, before we're going to convert everything up, we'll have one weapon in. We'll have the attachment system dormant, we'll patch that in on experimental, and then we'll come back and add more systems. But the idea is what we do do in experimental is meant to be a fully fledged, fully polished, like refined experience of a third person shooter from the operator standpoint. And then as we, you know, get more time that we can allocate over to it, we'll expand on it, we'll redo the attachments, we'll bring over more of the attacks will bring over more of the weapons from the other classes because the general idea is that we're going to add at least two or three weapons from every class to the operator over time um you know as time allows over the next couple of weeks the months uh anyhow back to you Dermar. um well thank you very much for that uh so Continuing on with the operator, so from the third person, first person conversion, um, what was the main drive? Like, what was the main push for that? Like, was it the sim? Uh, was it more of the third person would be uh, easier and it was more recommended, or was it uh, because first person was a bit more glitchier and whatnot? Well, also the aspect of the glitchiness, but at the same time, that could have been fixed. It was more so just kind of like when we kept looking at the game and playing World War Z and games like that, it just seemed like the third person perspective fit the just how much is going on at any given time. Like when me and Michael, and I think you were kind of involved in some of those conversations. It was just kind of like we, we were all just kind of advocating for like, okay, maybe we should just push the third person, see what the community thinks, give them the argument of why we want to change it from a development standpoint and from a gameplay standpoint. 
and then see where it goes from there. And see, and if my, my understanding of the straw poll, everyone agreed with this for the majority of them. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, so let's moving on to formations now. Um, I've seen quite a few screenshots and quite a few gifs of the new formation system that you've implemented. How how has that improved um, the overall performance and um, just flowing of of infantry movement? So the biggest thing that we know kind of sucked with our game is that you just kind of get like discombobulated, and they just kind of will make like the wrong like just like they'll just go the wrong direction sometimes. They'll basically spread out too far. They'll like the whole the old formation system was very very buggy, and we needed to have spent more. We need to we need to spend more time just basically getting the the formation system more fleshed out, making it to where it supported helicopters a little bit more efficiently. So because the old system saw helicopters as the ground units, which is why it just smushed them all together, or it acted really funny when they were going around objects. So at least with this time around of just expanding it, um, we basically just you know did a separate helicopter manager, did a separate ground infantry manager, they all talked together, and they basically try and keep a tightly knit group. Like, like you know, so when they're going through streets, the helicopters stay at a preset point amongst the infantry. You know, the infantry will stay at a preset point, and then the vehicles will tread behind automatically. So that way, the idea is that if you're giving your orders a long move order, they'll stay together. I mean, they'll stay together as much as humanly possible with abstraction, obstructions being at a level. I mean, there's always a chance that some cars might not be able to fit, and they might have to go around. But that'll just come down to the situation of, like, how, where you're going through. Have you cleared that clutter yet? And that kind of deal. Because if you can clear a majority of the clutter, you'll run into less of those issues of, like, where the cars have to go down an alley or they have to go down another street. But the idea is that when they do do that, they'll be able to rejoin their original position. And if you were to pull one car out of the formation to go do something else, the system is supposed to pull the next car forward to take that position. So that way, it's dynamic in terms of basically how it kind of, like, arranges the table, per se. Um, and then it supports patrolling. So then that way, the helicopters can properly patrol. The ground infantry can also patrol with the with the actual formations. And then we looked a lot at Total War, and we redid the way that the formations were handled in terms of their like their physical, like how they appear. Because instead of just making like one huge wedge, it's a wedge, 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 wedge. Like it's like four or six wedges going like vertically when you're moving instead of just one ginormous wedge that would sometimes get so unruly when you had larger squads, they would try and go inside the buildings when you were going down a street. So we did the idea of like a dynamic circle where they circle up and they make like an inner and outer cove. So they just kind of build towards the center. We did the, the column and the wedges and all those where they just make dynamic ones. And there's a limit of eight per wedge. So like it'll be, it'll make a wedge of eight. And then if you have more units, it'll make another wedge of eight, and then it'll keep doing it until it's, you know, satisfied the system of like, okay, like now you have four wedges that are going down a street. Um, or you have like, you know, a column where it's like, you know, eight people per column, and then it'll separate it, and then it'll separate it as the idea. So that was the biggest thing is just being able to kind of like edit that because that would help the pathfinding of putting them in impossible situations where like it's literally telling them, go inside that building with the old system, which was never going to work, which is why sometimes units would fidget and freak out and run all over the place. So that should be rectified. I mean, I'm sure there'll be some corner cases where, like, collision causes them to screw up, because they, they still try. Like, if you go by a pole, you'll see, like, sometimes the guy will kind of fidget a little bit, because he thinks he should be inside that pole, and then he'll readjust as they go around the pole a couple, a couple seconds later. So we're still working on like making sure they don't like freak out and fixing small little bugs here and there, but it seems like the formation system is like you know getting to where it needs to be. Uh, finally, and that's all I got. Okay. <laughs> well, that's uh, that was actually really good. Um, so speaking more into uh, the formation system a little bit here in the weapon system, um, I've noticed uh, infantry now have shields. So will shield like will infantry equipped with shields always be at the front of the formation or will they stack behind or like how would that 
How would that function? But if it's supposed to do that right now. There are some. It's it's supposed to do it by weapon. So the idea is it's supposed to arrange them by the weapon classes and what they're using. Um, we didn't go too deep down the rabbit hole for that because we've been kind of jumping around a little bit the last two weeks to try and get bugs and then the formation thing done. Um, but I feel like that could still need a little more help because ultimately right now to really get the best utilization of, of, of shield bearers, you have to manually order them to move around. Um, we need to kind of push that a little bit more. Because as far as I know, they're seen as a normal gun, so they don't properly arrange themselves in the formations, but that's something we'll do and improve on. Okay, okay. Um, now, for the big one, sort of, bug fixes. How is that going so far? So, oh, how many, oh yeah. There you go. Uh, which, which area are you mainly focusing on? Everything. <laughs> Everything. I mean, everything. Was, it's not just like one area of bug fixing. I mean, you figure. Uh, we try at least do like whenever myself or Derek do anything in a, in a night, specifically work at night times or sometimes in the afternoons. Uh, we try to do at least sixty percent bug fixing, uh, and then the other like forty percent is just like new stuff or just kind of getting us caught up on the roadmap. Sometimes it goes more of eighty percent bug fixing, twenty percent new stuff. So then that way we're at least, you know, having somewhat of a good allocation there. Um, but there's still a lot more bugginess to fix right now. Do you want me to hit up on the performance or wait? Uh, no, you can hit up on the performance if you want. So right now, a big thing for us has been just basically improving the performance. So we've identified several areas of the game. We kind of, it's kind of a bug, but at the same time, it's kind of like we need to, like, nail down the performance and get it to a minimum of 60 on most most rigs, 30 on really low-end rigs, and then from there, um, you know, go full, more full steam on the bug itself. Uh, but we've been working on the last two or three days proving the UI, proving the optimization of like how units here in C, and tweaking the um, Sorry, the, the skeletal mesh is ticking. So then that way we can get more performance out of the game. So far, I think Durvar has seen like 20 frames. Some of our moderators have seen like, you know, 10 to 15. Because the idea is it, it gives you more performance the more units you have. Because this, the, the performance tweaks that we put in are like, when you get to like 60 units or 50 units, the game kind of falls apart sometimes but on, on the Cirque side. Not as much as the infected because they're running so many like optimization systems, but all of those units are additive in terms of like the turrets, the towers, this the the ground units, the airborne units, all that stuff. So we've gone in, looked at it, and used the new profiling tools inside that Erosion Five to essentially um, curve that, bring down the effect of some of the particle effects that we're doing because the new tools are great in terms of basically allowing us to really be able to break down like what aspects of Niagara or uh, Nanite or like some stuff that we're doing, like the AI movement, that's a little too heavy. And we're trying to basically space out those calls or call them in different ways that would allow us to still accomplish the gameplay we're trying to get across, but at the same time, like not nuke out people's computers. So we're working on those, those three things right now of like the slate, and the ticking, and um, I have a brain fart now, and, and, and the movement component to a certain degree as well. So then that way we can just get that out on the next experimental, hopefully the next day or two. And then if everything goes to plan, your minimum is at least 20 frames. And then if it, well, that minimum is 20, 20 frames. And if everything goes better than what we're expecting, it might be as high as 30 to 40 frames. And some configurations of playing the game across the board based off of things that we've identified and we've clamped or like found new ways of limiting. Uh, I know that's been a, a lot of feedback is from the transition to Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5. We've had a lot of issues with 5 in terms of performance, in terms of like the motion blur. We changed the renderer back to Unreal Engine 4 in terms of basically the anti-aliasing method because the super sampling was what was causing the motion blur when people move. And it's just experimental. 
with Unreal Engine 5, we don't know why Epic broke it. But whenever that's why when you're playing in the current build, you're going to have this weird film of motion blur with them. So we switched it back to an older anti-aliasing, the one that ships with Unreal Engine 4 stock. And now the motion blur is gone, and we'll wait till they fix that. Um, but generally, like, and then we'll probably be using a little bit more of the physics until Chaos is more released, because we've noticed that when we do use Chaos and other stuff like that, the performance nose dives. So we'll hold off on that for a little bit longer on the performance side of things. So then that way we can wait until Epic kind of figures out on Engine 5 because they have a lot to figure out across the board in terms of, like, if you look at the bug fixes for the last couple of versions historically, there's been more bug fixes for Unreal Engine 5 than there's been in any other hotfix for any of the other Unreal Engine 4 versions. So that's something that's kind of affected us as well in terms of, like, oddities of, like, from the animation to the programming um, to the just the modeling itself of just like little oddities in Unreal Engine 5 that are like broken, don't work, X, Y, and Z. So we're kind of weathering that at the same time and just kind of falling back on Unreal Engine 4 tech sometimes inside of 5 to make sure that like everything is optimal and running the best it possibly can. Uh, that's all I got for optimization and bug fixing. Because bug fixing is such a generic thing that like we just have to do better. We have to get more of them fixed. So the goal is to get the, get the performance better over this week and then get the last couple of tidbits of the 1.1 done, which is ultimately the Meteor Atlas Tower, a shit ton of bug fixing, and then move into civilians in 1.2. Um, so that way we have the breathing room to do civilians correctly. Uh, but anyway, back to you, Dervar. Sorry. Sounds like plenty is going down. Yeah. Um... So you and I discussed a while ago uh, about the redoing of some of the animations. Uh, sure. How is that going so far? Oh, uh, so if you guys saw the, the GIF that was in announcements, that's the new male and female assault. Um, we've started basically building a whole new animation blueprint that's more optimized for people's computers. Um, we've been adding in more better transition effects better way so like you can see like the move the character moves a lot better in third person but you haven't seen some of the rts aspects is that they're not as floaty in terms of like when they turn um there's still some oddities there and every here and there but we've been kind of pushing more of a realistic way for them to move but keeping it performant as much as possible um we'll be adding in a feet ik based off of lod so when you're super close to your units they'll conform to the geo landscape so their feet they'll go to the ground We'll test that on experimental, see how it feels, and then worst case, we'll tie it to an option in the gameplay options. If some people just want the option to turn off feed IK to get a couple of frames back from the CPU. Feed IK, for people who don't know, means that we do a, a trace from roughly the, the the knee to the to the ankle to figure out like, okay, like where should the foot be? And then from that, we bend the knee outwards dynamically. So that's why when you play Skyrim or other, like other games like that, like the knee pulls out and the foot goes like at a slant to kind of conform with the ground. It's probably an oversimplification of it. But the idea is that then that way, the units will be able to actually like, their feet are actually properly on the ground, depend, no matter what angle for rock or the landscape or whatever it is they're on. It's more important for the operator at this point for a third person, but we're going to test it for RTS and then tie it to an option. Uh, and by default, it'll probably only be LOD level zero or something. We're still, we have to test that. Other than that, we're working on a new IK system, which will basically make it a lot easier to add new weapons in the future. Because on the left hand, we do what squad and insurgency does, where they attach the left hand via a automated like uh, constraint point that dynamically determines where the left hand should be. So then that way, all we do is most of the time animate the right hand, which is the dominant hand that controls the rotation of the gun. And then that will allow us in turn to get more weapons in. Um, and just obviously we turn off the IK when you're reloading, when you're doing other things that require the left hand to physically move. Um, and we're just figuring out the milliseconds for that to make sure it's not too expensive. Um, yeah, and then that that's pretty much it, I think, for the uh for the uh animation. Okay. 
So, Derry, uh, if you're out of questions, you can just open the floor for questions, and then we can just go from yeah, there. Yeah, I think uh, I think I think it's uh, time to open up the open up. The we can just keep and... it exactly an hour today. It's not the end of the world. Some people, because some people will just probably watch it on YouTube anyway. Yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah, so let's yeah. open up the floodgates and let people <laughs> come in and ask their uh, ask their questions. Uh, I know uh, Rishnak here has had his hand up for a while, so let's bring him. Yeah. Yes, no. Okay. Um, let's just go to the questions tab. Uh, Sergeant Snow is wondering if there's going to be more details about the infected lieutenants. Oh, so when it comes to the infected lieutenants, um, currently there's going to be three. They're going to be designed to be an actual unique character. There was a concept, sorry, not even a concept, there was a character model, like an actual character, like a fully modeled like face of them in the, uh, I think it was like two letters to the producers ago. So once we get the male and female assault situated, you'll see those models come in because we'll be putting in a new Infected. We'll be putting in a new Chelsea, the new Winters, and then the new Lieutenant's model. So it's the two that we do have done. And the third one will have to be done well, when Ashley recovers, because she's still recovering right now. But you figure um, the idea is that um, with lieutenants, it's just going to be a new model. They're going to have a different archetype of how they play. So one will be like, so the so one's like a Fenrir operative. So she'll basically be more stealth and she'll have a pistol. Um, the other one will be a, like a doctor. It's a, it's a doctor from anthrology in the last chapter, basically. And um, he will basically be more of like buffing and support units of the infected. And then the last one will be kind of like, and then we'll, the last one we have, we have to brainstorm about that one. But then, uh, uh, sorry, Chelsea will be more of like Mercer, where it's basically her inspiration will be directly from Alec Mercer from Prototype. So we'll take some abilities from there. That's currently scheduled for like one point. Or 1.5, I think it is. So the couple patch versions down to basically improve their AI, but it, that is something that we're basically like we know that the lieutenants are lackluster, and it's something we want to improve. It's just in our in our order of operations, we think that it's more important to do right now to do the optimization, the bug fixing, civilian management, factions, dynamic events. Um. Bounties, and then redo the Chelsea's lieutenants. Um, it could happen a little bit sooner, based off of just like we get to the point in the game where San Francisco North opens up, and then we have to tweak it a little bit. Um, but it's just it's kind of like fluid right now in terms of basically when we're going to be able to prioritize the AI. But it's it's actually planned for 1.5, as far as I know. Um, let me see. A lot of people with their questions up. Hands up. Derival, you want to pick one? Uh, yeah, let's bring in Powerful Buckshot. He's had his hand up for a bit. Okay. Uh, where's the input? There it is. Hello there. Hello. Hello. Okay, so, I have, uh, although this is a very early concept, I want to talk about the campaign. Um, sure. Are you thinking of like making. Campaign yeah, missions then. outside of San Francisco, yeah, so like in outside watch. countries or something. Uh, currently, the idea is to do it like Wings of Liberty, where it's basically your Hyperion is is uh, Alcatraz, and that essentially you launch missions, a la I guess you could say XCOM, where it's like one off missions where you go to like this scenario, you go to that scenario, mm -hmm. either in Treasure Island, in an Angel Island. Or in San Francisco, or in other like preset interior zones. There's no plans at the moment to do anything outside of San Francisco because right now the campaign is it just it never gets any further than that uh, in terms of the story yet. So if you're going to make it like XCOM, where you can choose wherever you go, does it mean we might have a, a global map? I think. For the time being, it'll all it'll be relegated to the region of San Francisco. 
there's always a chance of it being larger in the future. I mean, and myself and the writer have talked about that, but it comes down to scope and what we can actually do with, with, with like a reasonable amount of quality, with, with a lot of quality in it. So it's one of those things where it's like right now we're limiting it to the region of San Francisco. I see. Okay, then. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay, Derek, back uh, to you. We got anything else? We got uh, Game of Tom here with his hand up. Okay. Hello. My personal complaint, my personal complaint about the effect is because they can now claim Sniper is no longer safe on a rooftop. What about the affected lieutenant? Can they also climb? Or right now, that hasn't been patched in. We're still testing it and making sure it works functionally, like in the grand scheme of things. Uh, that would probably come in if I had to guess in the next two weeks or less. Um, when it when it comes to lieutenants and all of them, our plans are it's is to make it to where once the spinners gain that ability and it's reliable, we'll do what Left 4 Dead does and have preset points that the standard infected and other people can climb up pipes and other things slower to get up there. We will extend it to the juggernaut eventually, so they can jump, they can climb up there like in Rampage, example. Because <laughs> uh, eventually we want to make it to where it's important that if you're going to be on buildings, it's a, you know you secure you can secure the area around it, you can secure nearby buildings, so that, that way when people are climbing up your buildings, you can shoot them from the ground, you can shoot them from nearby buildings, uh, and that way it will allow you to kind of counter them, unless they're like right below you. Currently, you can't shoot people that are, like, right on the building that you're right on unless they're, like, visibly, like, there. Um, that's something we talked about a little bit in general chat, but it seemed like people were more adamant towards, like, leave that alone. I think that's a cool feature that you can't see them, you can't shoot at them, and, like, when they're climbing up your building. And then that way, it has an emphasis of you have to, like, put people on other rooftops. You could have a helicopter that theoretically patrols you know, like, there's different things you could do theoretically, or have a little bird people and just run by and shoot people as they're climbing up the, the buildings. That way you can counteract them coming up. Because they're going to be pretty slow. Like, the speed that you saw in the GIF is still, like, experimental. And we're still trying to make sure they don't get up there too fast, because it makes sense for a certain degree. The spinner is going to be the fastest one. Everyone else is going to be generally a little bit slower. Because you figure, like, we want to give you the time to react, and you can hear them. We'll have sound effects, we'll have sound cues, so you can hear, like, the building, like, shuffling sounds on, like, the actual building. Of, like, what's that sound? And then you know, like, you know, to have someone run by the building, or to have a little bird or a helicopter come by, you're like, oh, shit, there's spinners climbing up. You know, because you can hear them. Because in our game, you can hear sound even though you can't see them, similar to Company of Heroes. So we still play those sounds. So then that way you'll know, like, based off of those sound cues, things are going on in the Fog of War. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. What about that job? Yeah. That we should, I'd like a job that can throw boulders just like a tank from Left 4 Dead. Like, throw it at the helicopter to make it stun. Like, make it spin out of control when it gets hit. Yeah, that's something that... They do throw rocks, and they do throw the cars, but we're, we're going to work on their target acquisition a little bit better, so a little bit more deadly. Um, and then we're gonna we're gonna look at the scene if they can actually grab cars on the scene. Uh, I know Left 4 Dead does that. They do like a magnetic effect where when the when the tank wants to grab a vehicle, it basically like levitates to them, but they have they cover it up so well because the tank is so close to the vehicle. Um, but those are things that basically we want to just kind of like um, polish up. But as it stands right now, the 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 tank, the you know, the juggernauts still they do they do throw vehicles and all that um, here and there. They're like just grab nearby thing and then throw at the enemies. Essentially. Oh, you mean that? Um, yeah. yeah, I guess if we could talk about. Yeah, I mean that's not that's not something we're against. I mean, you figure that's something that could come. We actually have a little more time to polish on the AI themselves. Because I've been doing tiny little polish sessions here and there. If I changed the blow of guy, we added a meta explosion effect on experimental. You know, we spent a week or so polishing it, getting the range right and the damage right. Um, I did the operator. Once the operator is content, then I'm going to jump back to the spinners. I'll make the spinners more like velociraptors and pack hunters. And then I'll polish up the ability for them to climb. And then from them, I'll be either jumping to Chelsea or I'll be jumping to the Juggernaut in terms of AI, in between all the other stuff that's going on. Um, just to make them not as idiotic. Because sometimes they can be incredibly idiotic. Or, get, or you know, make very bad decisions sometimes. 
Oh, Juggernaut's job is to make bad decisions, though. So I guess that's the only caveat there. But anyhow, um, hopefully I answered your question. And then um, let me pop it back. Okay, uh, back to you, Derivar. Yep. Um, <laughs> Delta two zero left-handed operator win. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Uh, another one from Powerful Buckshot here. Can you explain in a bit more detail about your idea of adding radio vision, like in uh, uh, sorry, uh, like in Company of Heroes games uh, have, in order to oh. improve performance? I know what you're talking about, because I was DMing him about it last night. I was DMing like 20 different people about that to get their opinion. So um, the idea is is that historically, we've done a view model, which is basically a half a circle or cone. And we've gotten a lot of feedback that that like, made them feel like they were very, uh, very stupid AI and not very responsive. So we introduced a system called Detection Sphere. The detection sphere was, was basically a wall of sphere, a circle, essentially, that was just wrapped around every circ unit, that whenever a unit entered that circle, they immediately knew about it, and they reacted to it. Um, and essentially, what that allows us to do is that, you know, allows them to increase, like, their perception of, oh, there's something behind me, something to the left of me, something to the right of me. And that got larger and larger, over the last couple of months, as people were like, we want the gear to be more responsive. We want them to react like this is really bad. We don't like this. So we realized that we had two systems. Why do I hear myself on that mic? We, we realized that we had two systems that were basically, uh, I guess you could say, conflicting in terms of performance. So we turned off the radial vision and we basically left the circle on, and we noticed that we gained about 20 to 30 percent of performance. Um, and it made your units far more responsive than what they were ever before, in terms of like they were a lot more aware of their surroundings. In some cases, we might be able to even turn off their ability to hear because now they have that circle, and then it does the company heroes trace of like, oh, I can see here, I can't see here, and that made the game very ch- much cheaper in the grand scheme of things. So that's something that we're looking at and we're testing actually right after this AMA, I'm going to go and test that and uh, probably have Duravar test it, a couple other people test it, and then probably get some dev passwords out because you figure, I'm curious if you even notice a difference because historically we've been playing a weird company hero slash Far Cry like mix and the Far Cry mix has needed, has needed to go it was a cool idea on paper, I feel, from my side, but I feel like it doesn't work. But I feel like it's a bad idea. It's a, I feel like it's a precursor from when we were more like an XCOM issue at eight people, 12 people, and we could afford to put all those resources into them to hear and see. And instead, we need to go more of the company heroes approach of a circle. They enter that circle. I mean, I mean every, our, as far as I know, we're the only RTS game that does this. Every other game, I think even Men of War, you enter a circle, they fight. They know each other exists, and no, not, and of course, there's traces to the dictate. Like, oh, there's a wall there, so I know someone's not on the other side of the wall, so he won't try and shoot that person on the other side of the wall. But so stealth still is maintained as long as you have hard cover. But you figure that's what we're kind of experimenting because we get it. We found that it improved the performance substantially. Hopefully, I explained that well enough. Because when I was trying to explain to some people on text last night, they weren't understanding what a cosine is. And the cosine is basically like your peripheral vision of 120 degrees, I think it is technically. That's how what the circ was limited to. And some of the classes had 80 or 70 peripheral vision of like a like an arc in front of you, if you're looking in front of you right now. But now it's a circle, like every other RTS game since the beginning of time. And that saves performance, and it makes your units really responsive so that they're able to maybe have more information to make the right decisions instead of shoot that person first shoot these people and generally it seems like when you die it's more of your fault in terms of like why didn't they hear that person behind him you know kind of deal uh so we feel like it's the right direction to go in uh anyway you want to to add to that derivar because i think you were playing it last night you had that weird formation bug but we fixed that uh 10 minutes ago and i just put it out on devops but how did it feel to you, Derivar? Well, you were playing it. 
I mean, like with the new radio vision, it, it felt much, it, it felt a little bit better, really. Because okay. it, it, it felt better in the way of my units weren't brain dead when there was someone like right behind them. And then immediately just were like, oh, I, I know someone's here. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to shoot him. Basically, yeah. kind of deal. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Like, so, yeah, theoretically, that saves us more resources, too, because we don't have to do the hearing system. So, it's, it's going to be interesting to kind of see where that falls in terms of testing, because then we'll make a big deal about it on experimental. We'll test it secretly with like a few key people. If anyone absolutely wants to test it, just DM me. I don't care. Just DM me on Discord. I'll give you a special dev branch password just for this one moment before it goes out to experimental. You can test the operator, the new operator, but he's broken, so you can't get out of him right now. So just pure be dragons if you do want to try it out with everyone else that's going to be trying it out tonight. Just DM me on Discord. I already have King Size and the moderators is testing it, they are testing it. And just people I can really get back to and talk to in a moment's notice of like, what do you think? How does this feel? Is it better? Is it worse? And then, then we'll open it up to experimental in the next 24 hours, if not tonight. Because once I, I need to fix the transition for the operator, who are going back to RTS. And then that's ready for experimental, theoretically, of just playing it, testing it, seeing how it feels. Um, and let's see... Uh, did, I don't know, did you have anything else you wanted to add to it? Sorry, Devar. Oh, that's all right. Um, I, I was just going to add, uh, the odd thing is I couldn't actually go inside the operator. The option wasn't you actually could? popping up for me. No. Oh, that might have been. Hold on. Did you call it in? Pardon? Did you call it in via the option? Yes. I don't know. I'll test that one then. Oh, again, it's, that's why we haven't released it on experimental yet. Because I was able to test it when I cooked when I cooked it in the, when I was playing it in the editor. I was able to get the operator to work just fine when I called him in. Oh wait, is that the, you were you didn't you were we did you get caps lock? Yeah, I did. I don't know. Then I'll have to test that. I'll put that on my list of things to do tonight after the AMA. Is to look into that and figure out why you couldn't get into it. You'll have to stream it for me potentially too. Because if I can reproduce it. If I can't reproduce it, then I'll have to you'll have to help me out a little bit there. Um, okay, let's see if there's any more questions because we still have roughly twenty minutes to fill. Otherwise, yeah, there's, if there's... Still plenty. There's plenty of questions. Um, okay, hey, I'll use... another one from another one from Delta Two Zero. Uh, are you planning to add some some point? Hang on. Are you at uh, my English today? Are you planning to add at some point? Uh, VO notifications like your troops are under attack, helicopter low on fuel, etc. Is had I'm sorry, say that. Say the last part one more time. I'm sorry. Uh, VO uh, voiceover notifications like your troops are under attack and helicopter low on fuel, etc. Hold on, let me just check. Let me write that down. I'm pretty sure we have that VO recorded. Up there, low on. Yes. Um. Right now, it was delayed another day or two because of the stuff we found last night on Slate and how and you know, the UI was stealing about 10 to 15 frames from the game because it needed to be optimized a little bit. Um, we were Yesterday, we were working on it last night, technically. We were working on a system to where when helicopters and vehicles would get low on gas, they would automatically seek out a resupply zone and they would do it dynamically based off of their burn rate of gas. So they would know, okay, I need to leave at 40%. I need to leave at 60%. I need to leave at 80%. Because the idea would be is that they would always know how much they need to get somewhere. So based off of that, we were going to put that in, and that would help quite a bit for quality of life, because when someone's on a patrol route, it's the only work when you're on a patrol route, by the way. They're not going to do this automatically yet, unless there's a demand for that. But at the very least, we were going to add to where when you put a helicopter on a patrol route, they'll be like, oh, it's going to take me 20% of my gas to get to a helipad. So I'm going to break off in the patrol, refuel, and then come back. And they'll just pick one dynamically based off of which one's closest. It's something that we want to push for. But that'll probably be delayed at least, we'll say it's Thursday. So if everything works out for optimization today and tomorrow, it'll probably be Monday or Tuesday. Depends, because we might take a, a brief brief hiatus from the movement component to get that in, 
and then go back to the movement component and take a day from optimization to just kind of recollect, do research, and see what else we can figure out. Then we can push the system. And then I'm also going down to go and uh, get a, an older computer, a fourth generation processor, uh, a 10, I think it was a 970, uh, 8 gigs of RAM, and an older motherboard from an old computer shop nearby. I'm going to throw that together, and I'm going to start to QC the builds against that and do more of our bottlenecking and our benchmarking on that older computer so then hopefully I can try and reduce the system, like the requirements of Zephyr's protocol so that the video card and the processor and all that aren't, you know, you know I can figure out like, okay, where, or where are we doing something? We're like on an 8th gen or a 10th gen, it eats us for breakfast, but on a 4th or a 6th, it's like, nope. Can't do this anymore. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you two frames now. So that's something else we're doing on that front to just kind of like, you know, improve that. That should be tomorrow. They have all the parts. I'm waiting for them to text me back. Um Okay, sorry, I kinda of went off on a spiel there. <laughs> back to you, Dermai. That's all right. Uh a question from Ashy is if you change this system, I'm not sure what this system is. Doesn't I think that talk to you about the vision? Maybe. Uh, doesn't that Maybe. also change the effectiveness of formations? Ah, yes, the vision. Yes, it does. It makes the formations more efficient. Because you figure not only will they be sharing information via their simulated radios when they're close to each other, they'll also just be a lot more observant. They'll know, like, okay, like I need to turn around in this formation and check our back more often because I, there's infected consistently coming in this direction. So it would increase, I mean, Efficiency of units would go up by like substantially, because like if they now you're not screwed if they're not looking in that direction you're not screwed anymore. You're not gonna get mad. Or well, I'm sure there'll be some people that still get mad that they they decide to target this one over that one and they get killed. That's always gonna happen in an RTS game. So it's always gonna require some kind of manual input to, to tell the AI, no, I want you to shoot this person first. Let's throw a grenade here first. But the idea is that it would at least uh, increase the efficiency quite a bit. If you want, actually, you could message me and I can send you the password and you can test it yourself. And then you can tell me what you think in terms of basically uh, how it feels to so see if you have any suggestions or ideas before we put it out. Uh, again, anyone can really message me and ask me for the password. I'll send it over to you, make you guys a special branch, and then you can test it for today, tomorrow. Let me know what you think. Um... Okay, so let's see. We have see. a hand up. We have a hand. Oh, yeah, all you, Tavar. Yep. Okay, so okay. Puff, come on in. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, how's it going? Uh, all good, all good. First off, game's fucking amazing. I already dumped like a ton of hours on this shit, so it's like super fucking cool that I'm able to kind of talk to you guys right here today. Uh, oh, right. I mean, my Shut question up. is all about like uh, automation. So, like, do you guys have plans to automate different things like? like night vision or like civilian guardianship because i spend so much time like on the military aspect and it kind of feels tedious to automatically or manually the click like accept guardianship for like each and every single kind of person you know that really so. does suck yeah i know exactly yeah. what you're talking about um so that's come up quite a bit um that is the focus of 1.2 pretty much exclusively is to get the civilians to a point where you're not playing like you know babysit club you know where it's like okay like let's add roes that basically say if a civilian comes up to your your camp and he's visible yeah. the system will basically say like okay go to this infection tower and basically see if you're infected or not if they're infected you can set rules. So you can basically set rules. And those rules will basically determine how you want them to automate bringing people in. And then all you have to do is just come over and check it out every 5, 10, 15 minutes, see how it's going, see if something was like right at one time, wrong at another. Because it'll be conditional based off of like, do you have the ability to detect if they're infected? Do you not? And then from sometimes it'll say like, okay, do you want us to send them to the cages first for 16 minutes and then take them out and put them in general hold if they don't turn. Like, so you can set those kind of rules of like your policy towards civilians coming in and out of your camps. Um, and then the other thing is pushing it. We want to push it so that that way you can have it to where like the evacuation aspect of the game is automated as well. 
So you can effectively be like, okay, after they've been designated as clean, after they've been in a civilian hold for maybe X amount of time or maybe just immediately, take them from that civilian hold and immediately tell them to go to one of the evacuation helipads. So then that way you can start to have a steady stream of people being you know, evacuated from a zone. Because it, it, we want to get the game to a point in 1.2 where you can fight Chelsea by saving civilians by just emptying zones. Where it's just like, okay, there's like 2,000 or 15,000 people on this zone. Let's build a couple helipads. Let's set up some kind of like process in this zone and then start funneling people through the automated options and just be like 60 at a time or 100 at a time. Whatever the engine will allow us to do, some of it might be simulated and faked, quote unquote, and the helicopters just kind of fail. We have to kind of figure out where the cookies are going to, how that's all going to work out in terms of optimization. But we want to have it to where that's a viable option to play the game. And then there at that point, you can make no man's lands and you can try and like, because we want to have it to where you can also issue edicts of like, okay, everyone in this zone, I own you. There's no hell evacuation point here, but all you have to leave. Go to this zone where the actual evacuation zones are, and that way you can tell everyone to leave that zone, go to another zone to transfer populations over. So then at that point, if you, you could just literally empty your zone. So even if Chelsea takes them, she doesn't gain anything because you've already thought one step ahead of her. So that's something we want to do in terms of that. That all kind of feeds back into that level of automa automation in terms of like, okay, you don't have to sit here and babysit them because we kind of like have all the pieces there. Now it's a matter of just making it to where it's not as much, not as tedious for someone to actually like interact with those systems. And it's more of like a Solaris AI vassalization where you tell them, hey, go over here and mine resources. Okay, cool. Like, and then you just change their overall like what they're trying to do. But it's mostly automated. I mean, sometimes they make a mistake, sure, but that just here and there it happens uh, when you have an AI in charge of something. Um, yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Uh, thanks so much. Appreciate it. I think the question: Did you have besides civilians? Was there anything else yeah. in autom automation that you felt was like lackluster? That you felt was a chore when it came to like not civilian anything but civilians in the game? I mean, mostly, uh, I think, like, flashlights and night or the night vision. I think night vision should be automatic still because, like, it doesn't really add any value for me to kind of manually just turn it on, turn it off for, like, all the spec ops, you know? Okay. Because like, uh, I might have a whole squad full of, like, uh, spec ops and, say, like, uh, like scientists. And I, if I select the whole squad, it won't give me the option to, to like, manually select the spec ops Each and one, turn on or turn off. Yeah. So I guess my question would be, because the reason why we did that for the spec ops was so that because at nighttime it actually like negatively affects your units to where they lose vision because oh. they're blinded so i guess we could always just tie it into work like at a certain time of day if you have night vision goggles on it turns it on and off for you and maybe we tie that to an roe for flashlights i mean i Right now, the infected don't perceive lights, like the flashlights, so they don't... It's more so for you to know, like, what's going on, what's around you. It, it's more for, like, the... It's ironically, it's not, it's not as much for them, because they can see pretty goddamn well without the flashlights, <laughs> but it's more so for, like, yeah. you playing as, like, the person in charge to see what's going on. Um, so I guess that's always the thing, is that you figure for the flashlights... So you you think that it just should be some kind of automated on or off like like the city lights? And just in general, just to like kind of help you uh kind of like see uh, normally just for your soldiers to kind of uh get like the best possible kind of bonus in terms of like line of sight, you know. And the night vision time of day kind of feature sounds pretty cool. I mean that's pretty much uh, all I really ask for for that. Uh, Flash lights, I mean, it doesn't really matter if it's manual or not. I think that's kind of cool. That's manual because you could just. I don't know, maybe it's for, like, aesthetic for people or something like that. But all I care about is yeah. just uh, all that being managed by, like, thumb, you know, like, and I just kind of, like, move them around and, like, shoot people and with the soldiers or whatever, you know? Yeah. Like Let me write that. I'm going to write that down for the for the um, the panel where you can basically configure, like, how things are running in the game. Um, yeah. I don't know when we'll be able to put it in or, or like, we'll I'll guarantee it at least. So I'll, me and the other cats will get together. We'll talk about it out of the meeting and be like, okay, like, does this make sense? Could we do it? Would it affect anything negatively? And then from there, um, 
we'll see about implementing it. Because you think I'm not against it, but I need to like have more time, I guess you could say, to marinate on the whole thing of night visions and flashlights turning on and off. I think yeah. it's fine on face value. Um, yeah, it should be fine. But let me let me get back to you on that one. And then, uh, did you have any other things that you felt automation was like kind of janky? Oh, that's all I have for now, to be honest. Uh, it's just night vision and the civilian uh, collection or whatever. That's pretty much it. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for your feedback. And thanks for, yeah, you know, you uh, glad you're out, enjoying your like... game as much. Oh, definitely. Take care, guys. Mm hmm. All right. So we got some more time left. Uh, Derivar, you want to pick someone else? Uh, I don't think anyone else has their hands up. So let's move on to the podcast question area. And Sergeant Snow again has a has a good question to follow up on Path's question. Can there be a chance? Uh, can there be a chance to add a sound for the loudspeaker to echo to the civilians where to go to evacuate? Oh, the 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 billboard has this feature. In terms of this, um, I don't see why we can't add it to the speakers. Um. Have you tried out the billboard, and how does that work for you? Because it's supposed to, like, basically echo over a large area, grab any civilians within a circle, and tell them to come to the billboard if it's in the track mode. So ironically, See, the billboard acts like a speaker. <laughs> <laughs> a speaker <laughs> without being a speaker. Because, like, if we added it to where they had the, the billboard, that would be so, ex like, I just feel like that would be so expensive. So we made it to where it literally just does like a sphere trace of like, okay, everyone within this circle every five or ten seconds, come here. Just randomly come here to the billboard or read the billboard. Um, I mean, we might tweak that. We might probably reduce the size a little bit and then maybe push the speakers more. Because what you're saying does make sense. Is it'd be cool to copy and paste the layout of like the three modes for speakers so your music can terrify the hell out of civilians. So that way, if you're sitting there playing like rock music or whatever else, and you want a meme, or you have a little bird flying over the city, and you just want to put the heart of you know like the fear in people, you can just fly over the city and just play and put it in red mode, and civilians will just flee and run away from you. Can you imagine flying over the city with a little bird with BFG division playing, <laughs> and it's set to attract. That is such a badass song. <laughs> and my dog destroyed my hat. I wasn't looking. Then she chewed my top of my hat off. I'm very sad. Sad. Um, um, so we got another question here. Uh, we actually got a hand up from Vish, uh, Vishna here. Okay. Let's see if they come in. There we go. Hello. Hello. All mm -hmm. right heard something about lights and that just randomly made me think about stealth. I don't know why. Um, okay. Last I checked, the stealth system wasn't like real complex or anything. It was just keep quiet and that's about as stealth uh, that's about as stealth as went, right? Mm -hmm. Is there it's fairly just mm -hmm. flush that bit out more? Well, how would you like to see it fleshed out? Let's just start there. Um, like we know, we know that the currently the undead doesn't really notice lights or anything. Correct. But one thing I was thinking, like noisemakers, you know, fires being lit up, causing undead to be curious about what's going on. Oh, it's a flare idea from The Walking Dead, where if you see the flare, it'll like attract them or whatever. Right. And then, of course, um, if you say you've got someone, you've got artillery, you could use that to just hit somewhere, and that caused them to be like, what is this? Why, why did this explode? It's funny you mention that, because we actually have a noisemaker programmed in the grenade as a grenade type. The original game design doc called to basically have it to where you could switch out the grenades of any unit. So that the girl's assault wasn't limited to a frag, the spec ops wasn't li limited to a flashbang, and that's something long term we want to do is make them more. That, that's why we have the presets there. Is that when we get to a position where we can do that, we want to have it to where you can specialize the units where like they might have like an incendiary grenade that you can switch out to the assault and stuff like that. But at the same time, it could have a noisemaker. 
So then at that point, you can throw that, and it'll just it'll just basically grab all the infected in an area, and they'll just run around looking for something. So then that way, you could theoretically use that to throw them off your tracks or just to sneak past an area. So the code's there. We just haven't had the resources and the time to really focus that system because I feel like when we do the noisemaker, we're going to do it where essentially uh, you could switch it out. So we could like basically replace the frag grenade with a noisemaker or like with a thermal grenade or other stuff like that. That basically just allows you to have a little bit more like I guess you could say like you could specialize your units a little bit more in terms of the situations right. you think they might run into. Because the smoke grenades and, were a big thing for us. We wanted to have it to where you can throw smoke and you could basically use the, uh, I think it was the thermals on the spec ops to where basically uh, the, the infected couldn't see you and only the spitters could find you in the smoke. So you could use that to clear areas by saturating an area with smoke and then turning on their NVGs or whatever it was. I think it was, was going to be a thermal thing for them at the time. And that's something we want to come back to, is allowing people to like, like load smoke grenades on the mortars, and then just saturate an area, and then basically just well, smoke artillery, I guess, you smoke rounds, and be able to use like that kind of specialized weaponry in, in a space. Sorry, well, we're going to have to... Hmm. Yeah, something. Yeah, that's something... Okay. That one's going to take a little bit of thought. But the thing, too, is since this is a, this is a hive mind, correct? Yes, like, they're all answering to Chelsea. So would there be any thoughts about essentially being able to create tech that could disrupt local hive mind authority? Where, like, you have a grenade, you throw it out, and it completely screws the zombie senses, and they're kind of disconnected for a short bit? So like they just go crazy, like they just kind of, they just kind like of like they, don't, like, they don't do anything. They're like disabled. Berserking, you know, lethargic, you know, just different options to essentially allow your units to get through or whittle down the numbers, so to speak. To be honest, that hasn't come up in our discussions yet. Um, we haven't actually thought about that yet. I mean. The most we've thought about for localized affecting of stuff is we've thought about reintroducing the thermal with a like a, like some kind of like localized structure that scans an area via a pulse, and then basically it'll let you know when like masses of people are coming your way. Um, but we we haven't gotten into like disrupting their ability to uh to like act yet. But I'll write that down as a as a wish list item though. And so it's something we can look into in the future, potentially. Um, oh, did I answer your questions? That works for now, yes. I'm going to throw one of okay. the podcast questions. Okay. All right. Bye. Adirvar, back to you. Um, uh, we've hit, reached our time, haven't we? Uh, what time is it? 5.03. Um, I guess Michael joined. Anything, Michael, you want to say before we run away? But, oh my god <laughs> I hate you Michael <laughs> I, 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 uh, okay um, alright we'll take the biggest thing I want to say is just like um, honestly it's just more of just uh, I feel like there's going to be a lot of changes coming in here soon to the experimental and just kind of just make it you guys aware of like the feedback page we have for like uh, what the CP feedback and then as well as the Discord and Steam. sessions and stuff. Just, yeah. Definitely want to shout out to you guys that do use that to like tell us what's going on, how you feel. Uh, just kind of keep those in mind when you guys are playing the experimental. It really does help us kind of collect that feedback and analytical data just from how you guys are feeling and respond to it. So, yeah, you, you might, we, not, we might not always reply because we're literally just like killing us. <laughs> on the game design, but like it's just literally like we read everything you guys say, and we're like, okay, well, this is a problem, or well, they're talking about this, or this bug is here. So like, um, and our moderator um, has been doing a really good job of just replying back to you guys as well, and sending us that information on Steam, from Steam, and sending us the information from Discord and putting it in our dev channels. So you figure like. That is invaluable. Like, it is, like again, sometimes it doesn't seem like we reply. Michael doesn't reply, or like I don't reply. It's because we're already working typically on whatever you mentioned, and we're just like so deep into it that we're like, 
okay, maybe if I, we can like just you know let's just, let's just get right to it, you know, kind of deal. So every every bit of feedback helps us to basically figure out like, are we doing something right? Are we doing something wrong? X, Y, and Z. Um. And then again, message me in DMs if you want access to test out the new radial vision thing. Because the more the more feedback we can get now, the better in terms of like, oh, well, this is really good, or that's really bad, or I think you should address this, or you know, X, Y, and Z. If you're on Twitch, you can just message me on Steam. You can just find me on Dark. Um, because I'm twitching on Steam, I'm twitching right now the thing as well. So again, you can just find Dark on the Steam forums and just add me on Steam, or just comment on my profile that you're interested in trying out the new beta thingy, and then um. You know, we can bring you in, have you test it. I got to put up the password and create all the stuff right now. So give me about maybe 10 minutes at most after we get off here. And then I'll start sending out the message to people of what they need to do to type into this Steam uh, system to enter in the beta code. And then they can try it out. And then um, just, I guess, just DM me your feedback. So that way it doesn't get lost in one of the channels. Because then I might not know what you're talking about in terms of the vision. So just DM it straight to me of like, oh, I like this, I don't like that. And then we'll just kind of go from there. Um, let's see. Oh, we have one hand up. So I'll, I'll take this one hand, and then we'll run away. Okay. Everybody's just like, run. Oh, hey. Hello? <laughs> oh, so I was actually going to ask, right? Um, I've been playing this game a lot in the, over the couple of days, and I've been playing. I I keep hopping back onto it from time to time, but I'm trying to figure out where the end vision is for you and your dev team specifically, right? Because it seems like there's two paths here that you're kind of walking along, where one of them is kind of a quick time RTS kind of style, where you're trying to get things out as fast as possible, and the other side is this huge simulation strategy type, where you're trying to basically to do this massive operation across these four islands. And I'm trying to figure out which way in your head do you typically lean when you think about this game? Obviously the second one. The idea is that it's, the, the idea is it's supposed to be like, I guess you could say it's supposed to be more like you have this entire, it's, I mean, I guess it's kind of hard to explain right now, but essentially you, you start on the island and the idea is how would you deal with this kind of virus? How would you deal with this kind of pandemic? And then giving them the controls of a company heroes type game of like how you command people, but then taking some ideas from Solaris, taking some ideas from Total War and then like allowing them to kind of pick like, okay, I want to play ethically. I want to play, you know, like non-ethically. And just from there, just letting it devolve over out. Because the idea is it's not supposed to be like a 40 minute game, an hour minute game. It's supposed to be at least six, eight hour long games. So it's about getting it to that point of like a total war campaign. You play with your friends on like camp co-op or you play by yourself where it's like, okay, you start, you build up. You have your successes, you have your failures, but those things all are over like series of hours over one persistent long, I want to call it a campaign, I guess, because uh, for like pandemic mode. But because basically when you do a pandemic, it's like your own little campaign of how are you going to fight the pandemic virus? Does that answer your question or am I not understanding yeah, your question? Yeah, it does. Really? Yeah, you're understanding so my guess- question. I was kind of basically saying, are you shooting for, you know, like... Um, like you said, Stellaris, or are you shooting for StarCraft? And I think that that you, that you answered it confidently. You want to go with the Stellaris route, and I think that's great. <laughs> yeah, but, but just keep in mind though, we still want to be able to have that level of uh, like if you have a little small amount of units, you have the abilities. Like because it's Stellaris, Stellaris, they don't have the abilities. So it's also about like okay, like. You you know if you you can automate stuff or you can basically like just send huge mobs of people and they'll fight, but it still has that layer of sophistication of like you can like close in on like four man groups, eight man groups, and they'll have abilities and they'll have interplays of like okay, you want to have heavies and assaults and these kind of combinations to work with each other. Cause as far as I know, when I played Solaris, it's only just like six classes of ships and it's just like typically it's very brute force of just numbers games of like who has the highest uh, uh you know ap i think it was a damage power and all that and typically they win with like the commander so it's like getting out of that rng and making it to where like really good 
plays in a split second, like in StarCraft, can save the day. Of like you play, you throw a grenade in the right spot, or like in Covenant Heroes, you throw a grenade in the right spot, satchel charge, calling it an airstrike. If that it's like it's like a it's a combination, it's a hybrid almost. Because it's some, I, I would argue it's something new, but I think any developer that's designing a game always tries to argue that. But but you know, it's essentially <laughs> like I, I feel like it's something new. It's hybrid. It's it's not it's not those games. It's something like it's like a amalgamation. It's a combination of those ideas into something that like is fresh. I would hope. Uh, but there are mm-hmm. there are aspects of it that are familiar. If that makes any sense. Where it's yeah, like, oh, yeah, I get where they got this. I get, yeah, so that's the goal. And that's why sometimes it feels like, oh, we're adding in this, we're adding in that. Where are they doing? Like, what's the scope? What are they trying to accomplish? And the grand scheme of things, the whole rapper is I Am Legend, you know, like that kind of scenario before Robert Neville basically is by himself. What did he have to get to <laughs> through to get to that point? You know what I mean? So it's like, it's always been like that kind of like simulation of all those like or prototype of like now you're in the military, try and solve it or just lose like, your game session, whatever. <laughs> like you know, because every a lot of people are gonna lose before they win typically. Um, but that's generally the idea behind. It. Um, okay, so we'll end it there because you figure <laughs> we went over our questions. Um, and then one last thing again, if you want to play test it. DM me, I'll give you the password, and it's for testing the new radial vision. Um, and then we're going to go work on the next build. I got to go catch up with Michael. And then uh, if everything works out, it'll be an experimental tonight. If it doesn't, it'll either be tomorrow, it'll be tomorrow night, worst case. Uh, and we'll just kind of go from there. Um, thank you guys for coming. Oh, there you want to do this? I did the thing again. Um... Uh, I'm, I might have to get you to cover it because I've lost what I had written down for this part. Oh, sorry. So, um, basically, uh, if you can, it does help us if you support us on Patreon or if you or if you want like, you know, to support us on like our swag, on our thing. Uh, it's kind of like our shameless promotion segment, basically. Um, so, if that's something you're interested in, check out our Patreon. There's the section that allows you to basically design your own weapon and work with Michael. Uh, the section where if you you know you can basically we'll add your you add we'll add you in as an NPC into the game. Uh, so there's a little stuff like that that we're putting on just to kind of help uh, raise money for the game because we are self funded. Uh, we go purely off of sales monthly on the game, so it's like there's ups and downs every month. So we're just at the same time that we're also trying to get a publisher or someone to kind of back us be an angel investor, but at the same time. We've, uh, we're trying to retain the control that we've always had, so then that way we can make sure we can make the choices that need to be made in terms of like what we feel the game needs to go. Um, so that's, that's my shameless promotion section. <laughs> and there you go, Davar. I, I did the thing. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Right, oh, that's it? Okay. And... <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. You guys have a good evening, morning, whatever it is geographically. Uh, bye.